and welcome to The Story Pilgrim, episode three, Anya Baca. Anya Baca, I hear you say. What? What? Um, I thought you were going to do a podcast about walking. Yeah, I am. And I'm also going to be introducing you to people that I meet along the way. Along what way? Along the way of life. Come on, stick with it, people. I hope that you enjoyed the first two episodes, uh, St. Cuthbert's Way, me walking from Melrose in Scotland to the Holy Island. If you haven't listened to that, go back. Start again. You can listen to this first if you want. This is Anya Backer. Who's Anya? Anya is our harpist. That wonderful harp music that you're hearing throughout the entire episodes is all by Anya. I met Anya just by chance, really. More is it, or was it? I don't know. I had a chat with Anya a couple of years ago. She's an amazing woman, and I felt that I needed to dedicate some time to her early on in the podcast, because you're going to hear a lot of her. Well, you're going to hear a lot of Sean, her harp. I chatted to Anya a couple of years ago. Still haven't met her. She's an amazing woman. She's doing an amazing thing at the moment. You'll find out more about that later. So please sit back and enjoy Anya. This is going to be an interesting chat. Well, I kind of started by uh, by accident in 2010. Right. And and I learned a few lessons in 2010, and I thought I had it all under control. Because I'm, I'm sure you've noticed by now that pilgrimage is very much... You know, we start out with all these intentions. We're going to go do this and that and the other. It never turns out that way. No. Like it just, we are not in charge. No. Like my 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 point of view is is that uh, people who really engage with pilgrimage are people who are called and they're given a job to do and they don't actually know what that job is, but they're being put on that road and they're going to walk and they're going to find out. Now, what they do on an individual level with whatever message or whatever, whatever, because I'm not even into, you know, oh God, I, I met loads of these pilgrims who go like, I was sent by God to preach the word. Okay. Well, yeah. good luck. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a wonderful thing, but I think that it's a way more personal thing. You know, if you do believe in God, Wonder, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience, I'm sure, yeah. but like the world doesn't really work that way. No. But I, I do think that they are the those yellow uh, arrows lead us out of this belief system that we have to participate in society the way it stands today. Yeah. So it's an, an act of anarchy, in a sense, you know, to walk out of your life. But then you do have to, you know, there is, there seems to be a lot of confusion as to what pilgrimage actually is. Yeah. You know, lots of people now think that having a cheap holiday is, you know, and participating in parts of pilgrimage, uh, that that is already pilgrimage. Yeah. Now, the Friends of St. James, who I've come across, of course, on my way to uh, Saint, to Santiago, as well as to Rome, because they host pilgrims all along every pilgrim route. They would say that anybody who stays in any of their facilities, so anywhere where there is a donativo by the Friends of St. James, everybody who sleeps there is a pilgrim. Yeah. 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 You know, which is like, I'm still struggling with this. Like, I struggle with that every day. But they've got a really good point, right? They've got, because in a sense, all these people were called to head that way and sleep in that facility. Yeah. So... It's true. So there you go. And then in 2018, I went, I, I, decided, I knew in 2010 when I arrived in Santiago that I would not go home and just go back to Santiago over and over. I had met a man who, when he was 19, had walked from Paris to Santiago, Santiago to Rome, Rome to Jerusalem. And he made such a big impression on me. It was in Moulin Ayon in France. And when I arrived in Santiago, I said, I'm not going to go to Finisterre, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to go from home back to Rome, and from home to Jerusalem, but I don't know when. And of course I went home, I, you know, I met somebody, I thought, yeah, I'm going to have a line, we're going to get, have, have like, everything was nice and cozy, and of course, not no. at all. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole thing came apart, and I went, I thought I went, well, okay, I'll go to Rome. So I went to Rome in 2018. But of course, my big thing is is that I carry a harp. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm the only woman, most likely. Like, I have no actual proof. But it looks like I may be the only woman in the world to have ever done that. So, I think kudos to me, you know. No, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You and that took you. You gotta have a story, you know. So. And that took you six months to do that. Yeah, five months in a week. But I took a week off in between because I, I ran out of money continuously because I, I do travel by divine providence. That's one of my rules. So I don't set out. I know there's a Dutch guy who went to Jerusalem there in 2018. So and I actually was walking behind him. He came from the west of Ireland. He went to Jerusalem. And his spiel was that he had no money. So he wasn't using any money. So he literally handed in his wallet to his father. And I, I sat with that for a while and I thought, that's a really interesting take on pilgrimage. But that's not what divine providence is. No. Divine providence is that you're being led in the direction that you need to go yeah. uh, without having the means. Yeah. And of course, because I have the harp, I do have a form of means, but you do need to recognize it as such. And not everybody does. So you still have like the there is a bit of hardship in there like a pilgrimage can never i think one of the rules of pilgrimage is if it's easy uh, you got a problem because there has to be some form of like you don't have to suffer yeah but you need to be challenged yeah in a way that you've never been challenged before and if you don't feel that challenge well either you're a holy person you know yeah you can <laughs> yeah. or you have no lessons to learn so then you know pilgrimage is a learning journey I think yeah. I, I mean, that's my waffle no I love it I love it thank you so much for sharing that pilgrimage as a learning experience that's really interesting now I should mention at this point that Anya is going to mention some things that may trigger something inside you she doesn't go into any details, she just talks about past experiences. You're not supposed to know, you're not supposed to plan, you're not supposed to do anything, you're just supposed to go. Go, exactly. <laughs> the organization, like with the harp, and last time I thought, oh, I'll be more organized. Yeah, I'm really lucky because I'm just not very organized as an individual. I've, I've lived my life a bit haphazard, you know. Yeah. I'm a musician more by default. Because there isn't really that much else I'm good at. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not so much like, oh, I've got talent. You know, I can write. I, I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a good storyteller, which definitely helps. Yeah. I mean, it makes a big difference. Uh, but otherwise, I really don't have any talents. Like, I'm socially a bit awkward. I talk too much. I'm a little bit too intense. You know, really, I'm not very likable. There's a pilgrim. <laughs> As a, as a pilgrim, all these things actually are really handy. Yeah. Because I'm very much on my own. I'm tenacious. You know, I, 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 there are definitely a few things in my life that I know will never be okay. Not even in my in my lifetime. Yeah. That you know, I, I, I my story, the story I tell a lot is. Um, because I come from a Catholic background, and you, they had this idea of original sin, yeah? yeah. And my my mother was raped as a as a teenager by by an out of school teacher, and this kind of now I, I I don't know, like there's no proof of this, but I am fairly sure that she came from a long line of women that were raped over, you know, through the generations. This is now. Look, this is nothing new. Like it's not a, an original story. But the question is, what do you do with? Yeah. Like when you find these things out, what do you do? And I walked a pilgrimage. Yeah. And what I learned out of that was that original sin is not that what we do, but it is that which is given to us without our permission. Mm -hmm. We didn't get permission for people to be to wage war or to you know what we're seeing today as well, all the animosity. As individuals, we don't get permission for this. But this is like I don't call it sin, but this is the pain of the world which expresses itself. And what do you do? I found out pretty early that 
Fighting is a non-go area for me. Fighting is nonsense. I fight a lot on a personal level inside of me. Yeah. It never gets me anywhere. It's just a lot of energy which gets wasted. Sure. So fighting doesn't work. Um, then you have to be politically active or something. I have no interest. I have an interest in the greater good, but as a participant, not as the teacher, because I'm, I'm Dutch originally, and we're already like with the finger up, you know, everything is like this. So I don't want to do that either. I don't want to participate in that sense. Sure. I think as a society, we are wrong. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to sit and be silent, go for walks and heal. That's what we need to do. So tell the stories, create circles. Um, and like I said in my email, I, w I went out there uh, in 2010 and I went like, anybody who was affected by abuse, they can come and meet me and they can tell me their stories. And like, people wouldn't sit in the circles. They wouldn't come and share, in a, but they would come and share on an individual level at the most inopportune moment. <laughs> and it was amazing. It yeah. was amazing. That's beautiful. And the stories, the stories happen automatically. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested because I think that you, you've got the nail on the head. Hit the nail on the head. Sit and be silent. Go for walks. As I was talking to Anya, I really felt that I'd found a kindred spirit. And she then went on to tell me why, when she's walking, she prefers to stay with monks and nuns. I have an issue with religious life, so I go and stay a lot with nuns and monks. Because they either piss me off enormously, or I learn something from them, you know? And, 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 and because I travel by divine providence, I like the idea of not really having a choice. I either sleep outside, or I accept hell. Yeah, that's amazing. And the, yeah, and the vulnerability is what makes me strong. Yeah. And also that vulnerability also keeps me safe, which is like an uncanny kind of thing to say in the world as it stands today. And honestly, like I, I was in my 40s when I started walking. I, I lived in Turkey for a while. I know what it's like to be harassed as a, as a woman, you know. As a pilgrim, I walk in skirts with a harp on my back. I. I've had things thrown at me, you know, I've been spat at, I've been insulted many times, but all of that is really nothing because I've never been on stage, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I've had one or two encounters that weren't nice, but in the greater scheme of things, I'm safer. I'm, in Europe, you're so safe yeah. on the road, and there's so much fear in the world, yeah. so much. Yeah. My, my, the, the group I resonate with, obviously, the most are women, and most of them would never wander out of their house. If, and also in the, the Facebook groups, if you hear the questions that women ask, their main fear is for their safety. Mm. How the hell did we ever get there like? How did we get here? Well, I mean, that is a great question. And then Anya had a great question for me. I still, I still dream of my Camino, I wake up in the middle of the night and I, 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 I don't know where my feet went. Now, question, who did you connect more with? Who did you connect with the most? Was it the people living along the route or the people walking the route? That's a really good question. I would say I had, I made some really strong connections with people who were living along the route, but because... Yeah. Because I was um, I was flying through, I I and had more you chance. You feel guilty about that? Do you feel yeah. bad about it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not alone. No. Oh, yeah. No. I one day I got lost. I, I I somehow missed a missed an arrow, and I was in the middle of nowhere. And I you know you know when you're not on the computer. There's no such thing as getting lost. So you were sent off the road to go <laughs> meet someone. Okay. This is it. And I yeah. met, first of all, I met this old, old man walking his dogs who didn't speak a word of English. And my Spanish is really bad. Um, we managed to have a very quick conversation where he was like, you're not on the Camino. What are you doing over here? Get over there. And then about 10 minutes later, this herd of cows came down. And 
I was like, oh, the cows are overtaking me and there's a woman driving her cows. And I said to her, look, I'm lost in my broken Spanish. I'm lost. I need to get back to the Camino. And she's just like, okay, I can help you. And this is all in Spanish. I can help you get back to the Camino. But first, you need to help me get my cows in this field. So we did. We spent like half an hour driving our cows into another field, did that. And then she's like, okay, come on, I'll take you back to the Camino. And that was, I'm like, where does that happen? <laughs> no. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. In real life, that happens actually all the time. Yeah. But we ignore it because we have so many schedules. I see your dilemma. You've got a real big dilemma. You've got the same dilemma that I have. If you organize too much, you don't get the opportunity to meet these people. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like I, re I remember walking, you know, I went to, I remember walking into Brittany. I come off the ferry from Pekin. Where do I go? <laughs> I just went like, okay, due south. You're going due south. Yes. That's all you want to do. And about a day and a half in, I was starting to get a bit down because I knew, I knew I, I had no, like my French wasn't that great. And, and I'm thinking like, I, I speak French, but oh, I'm not so sure. Can I deal with all these people? And I, I walked into this cafe to get a coffee and this man I could hear he wasn't saying very nice things. And I was getting really down on myself. And I thought, okay, what I'll do is I'll go sit somewhere. I don't, because I don't know what to do. So I'll go sit somewhere and play a bit of harp and I'll see what happens. So I found in the, in the, in the churchyard, there was a little bench next to the graveyard. And I thought, okay, perfect. Bit of shadow. I'll rest here. I'll make up my mind later. And I start playing. And suddenly I hear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. And there's this tiny little nun, yeah, jumping up and down. I can just see her head come up over the edge. And she goes, but there's an angel has landed in the graveyard. And I go like, no, 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 it's me, it's me. And she goes, oh, it's me. And I said, it's just me, Anya, I'm from Ireland. And she goes like, what are you doing here? I'm walking to Santiago. And she says, I thought the end of time had arrived. Oh, said, oh yes. <laughs> And she said, so what are you doing here? I said, I'm, I'm uh, on my way to Santiago. She goes, back your the wrong road. You're on the wrong road. I said, no, I'm not on the wrong road. What do you mean I'm on the wrong road? I'm heading to yourself. And she goes, no, 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 no. Yeah, the, uh, the, the shows, uh, there's the, these uh, little arrows, these yellow arrows. In the, no, yeah, they won't come with me. So before I know it, like I'm sitting there, I'm being fed, she has a bed made, she goes, you need to go rest because it's too hot to walk now, and I need to make a phone call. Oh. And she makes a phone call, I come down, she wakes me up after an hour or two, she says, I'm going to give you food, and I, I'm going to put you on the road, and you have to walk for one day, and then when you come in to Camper, Camper, you call this number, and there is a man waiting there for you. And he will explain to you what it is that you're doing. <laughs> and it, exactly right. So I followed the arrow. Yeah, I never heard of the shells. I didn't know what it was. Okay. I didn't even know they existed. And I ended up getting lost. Then again, I met another nun. And I swear to God, that woman, you could look straight through her. They were, they were doing a prayer. I really didn't know where to go. So I knocked on the door. And she looked at me and she said, Oh, my child, you better come in. Like, you know, I, I better. Is there any, what can I do for you? And I said, I'm lost. I, I don't know where to go. And she knew that man as well. And she said, Oh, I know where he is. She said, Don't worry, I will phone. He will be waiting for you. This man had just finished a little chapel to St. James. And he had been thinking about how he could bless the chapel because the, the, the priest was coming out and, and he had bought. A, a tiny little hamlet and had done it all up for pilgrims because he had been to Santiago at least five times and he taught me everything. He originally, his family came from the Camino del Norte, so he was familiar with the whole pilgrim thing. That man, I'm still in touch with that man. Like, they changed my life. They actually changed my life, these people. That's it was, I never, I knew, you know, I realized I knew nothing and yeah. that I was a complete nitwit and I also that was the place where I realized that it wasn't just me going for a walk with a harp it was actually there was no choice I could not have done anything else 
could not have done anything else. <laughs> what an amazing story. I'm absolutely loving my chat with Anya. And she then tells me about a future project. The plan is, is to walk out to Jerusalem over the, over the first uh, Crusaders route. <laughs> I can't use that word, but okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the old, and then uh, the Sultan's Road, and then over, you know, to Bursa, and then from Bursa I have to cross that big stretch. But I have connections in Karama. I speak a bit of Turkish. My daughter is half Turkish, so I'm I'm not I'm not worried about Turkey at all. I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, and I'll be stop. I'm gonna make a little detour to Sparta because I have an obsession with Spartans, and I want to see. I want to see the actual location. And from there, I'll go to Karaman, and Karaman, I'll get ready to head into the Middle East. I might take a month or two, and I'm gonna take a year to walk there. It takes about seven months to walk, but I'm gonna take a year, and then on the way back, I'll take the boat to Cyprus, and from Cyprus, I'll decide either to go through Greece and then take another boat to the DC. But I have connections in southern Italy as well, so and I want to go to Naples as well. Wow. Um, wow. And then walk back over, because I haven't been to Assisi, walk back Rome, Assisi, Santiago, and then down north to Beck to, to where I started in France, and then go either go over England or go to Canada. I don't know how I'm finishing. But I do want to end up in Santiago at the end because I have I never went to Finisterra. Then I have my cycle round. Yeah. I can finish off and then I won't have to do pilgrimage in that sense. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh. So yeah. like that's a fascinating. So going back, do you write your yes. own music? Uh yeah, I, I write music. I mainly play like I play traditional Irish music, but I do a lot of, uh, imp- what I started doing on the road already is a lot of improv, uh, mainly modal, uh, okay. because it's the easiest and I don't really don't have to think about it. It's a little bit, the original music that I do is very much uh, in the line of sati. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, simple, simple two, three lines moving to and from each other, harmonic explorations. That is the main thing that I would do. So after all this walking, where is Anya now? What are her current thoughts and passions? And just her thoughts about life. You see, yeah. these are the things that I'm interested in. Because I, yeah. I, you know that they have now the slow ways in, uh, in, in England. They're connecting all the that you can walk from town to town on foot. It's a thing that I would love to see in Ireland. I would love to see it over the whole of Europe. Yeah. You know, that we have the right, because I feel we have the right to walk from place to place. It's our natural temple. Yeah. You know, we have to stop this idea that it's so handy to be quick. Yeah. But it doesn't suit you. You're human. You walk. That's what we do. That's the right pace for us. Um, so I, I, they have a few lovely hashtags like walk from home. Nice. Walk. And um, so I've been tagging that all, all along because I think that that is exactly it. You know, well, how can, can you organize it to walk from home to get anywhere? Yeah. Well, this is what Anything. I had the conversation with John, this, this guy in Chicago, when he told me he walked to Rome. And I was just like, John, so to Rome, where did you start? And he's like, Darren, it's a pilgrimage. I started from my house. And I was just like, that's it. Why am I starting? I'm starting from Melrose to do St. Cuthbert's Way. But no, it starts from this seat. It starts from me walking out the door. Yes, exactly. Every yeah. time we put our feet on the road. I have a little thing that I say every morning when I'm on the road, which is like, my, I, I, I don't pray. So I have like a banter thing with St. James. Because he is the pilgrim saint of all pilgrims. And I, I hold my shell and I, I hold my staff and I go, St. James, listen, mate, <laughs> what we're going to do today. Now, don't forget, it's, you know, if you think it's important what I do, make sure that the road keeps being uncovered in front of my feet. Open up the road in front of me and I will walk. You keep the road clear, I will keep walking. I will do anything that you need to do, just get me there. And that's the deal we have. And then we start walking. And of course, that's why I don't believe we can get lost. 
No. We're never lost no. because we're looked after anyway. You know? Yeah. And that's it. what I loved also is how like the Camino or your walk becomes a person in a way. It it it, yes. it, it gets an identity, doesn't it? That you refer yeah, to like, works. oh yeah, the Camino was good to me today. Oh. <laughs> It is, yeah, and it's such a mindful way of living our lives and being in the world. You know, yeah. the, the walking is definitely, if everybody would walk like 10 kilometers a day. I did it here with a friend of mine. She went like, oh, I could never do any of that. I said, you come walking with me. For six weeks, I do her walking every day, a minimum of 10 kilometers. Her life changed. Yeah. Her life changed. And that was just walking around here. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. But that's it. But it's not like, oh, you're one hour. No, you need to go out for two hours. No, no listening to music. All this stuff, all this distraction. No music, no nothing. Off you go. Yeah. There you go. Let's walk. And how true is that? Walking has also changed my life. I mean, it, it just does that. Then Anya just started talking about spiders. I always feel that it's like we're like uh, spiders in a web and the web are actually all the lines of you know that in the united states in the 60s they did all these studies you know does this interweb energy thing actually exist and it exists yeah we are all connected through energy and that's the thing i always imagine when i'm walking that some of these connections all of a sudden become real i didn't know you know but really we're all each other's brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, aunties, and so and if you and when we find that within ourselves and that is how we approach the world, the world starts to treat us differently. It does. Uh, and in a better way, I yeah, think. Totally. For me it's no, always better. Totally. And and we see it differently. You know, I I've changed so much, you know, and yeah. uh, and like I say, I started the Camino a, a questioning Christian and I ended it totally agnostic you know I, yeah. I did a spiritual walk and and like yeah it totally changed for me and it's good it's right I've got no problems with it I mean, I, and I met some really fascinating priests and nuns and monks and seminary yeah. people on the way who were completely religious and that's great for them wonderful yes you know exactly yeah, yeah so Oh man, yeah, the whole, the whole. I, I was standing, I was walking for two months with a, a man from uh, Brittany, and we were standing out in the Alps. I was looking at the photographs this morning, <laughs> and uh, we're looking at the at the ice line. Yeah, first of July, and I had to still go through the ice, and uh, and he said we the conversation we had been having. His mother, his no, his, his wife had died of cancer, and he was he was walking because he was angry. And we're standing out in the Alps, and suddenly I just I could feel it. Like I could feel everything, everything. And I'm there, and I'm going like, oh, oh no! And he is going like, what? And I'm like, there is a God! And he goes, no, there is a God! <laughs> I like Christ. I hate God. I just think he's here. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. all I know is there is more than we are I don't know it's not God it's not it's not the word God that we use but there is more out there for sure like. exactly <laughs> that's what I did I removed the labels I was just like no. there's something there I don't know what to label it with people that label it with don't have a clue what they're talking about <laughs> it's like people I realized when when I heard that discussion about the thing, what I realized is that people who really, because funnily enough, in a sense, you've got a faith, you you know, yeah, you just know, yeah, and people who who uh, who proclaim that faith continuously, what they're saying is that they want to believe, but they don't know, yeah, yeah. so people right. who preach a lot, like this whole year of preaching, is basically trying to convince yourself that this is the truth yeah yeah but it means that you don't know because if you know when you meet people who know they don't have to say anything they don't you can have to them. You... they go straight into you like without words that's it so you know that's it i always go like oh you got to preach i know who you are like that's i wish you well like 
Wow. Or have, and I always say to them, or have us pray in each other, which is like the, the Benedictine, the, Be, the Benedictine line, let's pray for each other until we meet again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know? That's yeah. it. I'll, I'll do that for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. I really, at this point, I've just really been swept away by Anya. Um, but her final words really did hit a chord with me as a performer, as an artist, uh, just as somebody who generally is loving life. I was just fascinated listening to this voice of experience. Yeah, but uh, don't forget that all art that was created before the, uh, before the creation of television you know, was all in that vein. It was all through practice, practice and re- repetition. Now, and people always say, like, oh, we need to have new material. I have been playing some of those tunes forever. There is 7 billion people on Earth. You could play the same tune forever. You know, you could really make it really, really, really good. Yeah. And there is stuff I don't have to think about. Sometimes I don't play for, but I, I hadn't played for a year, sat there behind the harp and played the entire repertoire that I played on the Via Fontaine now, because it just came out, because it's, it's there. It's there, it's in, it's in here. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Seven billion people on the planet. That's a lot of people, isn't it? And what a great perspective to leave it at. I had a great talk with Anya. Anya is currently on the road on her way to Jerusalem. She's had an amazing journey so far. Please, I'm going to put her website and her GoFundMe URL in the description of this episode. Visit it. Seek her out on social media. She's had setbacks she's had great times she's had down times but she's still determined to get to Jerusalem and I know that she will I wish her all the best I can't wait to actually be in her presence we haven't met yet just one of those things we will I know that thanks for listening to episode three of the story pilgrim a nice lovely chat with Anya Baca please join me for more Episode 4, I'll be back on the road again. Where? Well, you're just going to have to tune in and listen. I am going to leave the last words to Anya. Well, Sean, the harp, being played by Anya Baca. Here is the entire theme that Anya has written for the story Pilgrim. And just to give you a quick background on this, I asked Anya to tell her story and Sean's story through Sean. This is the amazing end result. Thank you once again, and enjoy Anya and Sean.
The Story Program was written and produced by Darren Hill. Music by Anya Backer. For more information, follow us on X and Instagram and go to thestorypilgrim.com. For more information on Anya, go to theflautingharper.com.